If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that this room, this space, has been what I've filmed most of my YouTube videos in for the last four and a half years. There's been some really, really good times here. But all good things have to come to an end, right? That's what's happening. Four days after this video goes live on YouTube, I'm moving. So I thought to myself, why not do a final studio tour? F studio slash desk tour. Well, either way, let's get started with that. This tripod, right? Okay. It looks good, but it's a little too dark. One second. That's significantly better, but now it's too bright and I need a chair. Before I tell you what's on my desk and everything I use in the studio space and show you nice B-roll shots of this desk space, I just want to tell you some little background information. You may not know this, but up until this point, I've lived with my parents. Why? Because number one, I finished my master's degree only two years ago, and then I started working full time. And number two, because I'm poor. This room you're seeing, this room, this whole YouTube studio slash bedroom has been my room since I was nine years old. I sleep, I edit, and I record here. I do all of that here. All my business is in this space, and it has been since I was nine years old. Okay, I don't need to make myself seem even older. So let's talk about my desk setup a little bit. This is where I shoot all of my B-roll footage. It's all these type of shots you see here. I'll use this light, right, that you can see me moving to uh, change up how the scene looks and make it look nice before taking a shot. And not the alcoholic kind, the video kind. Of course, this does limit myself to just this space and that may not necessarily be a good thing. I try to mix it up. I try to record in different areas a lot but when it comes to my default shot, this is where most of it is done. And you can clearly see it in the majority of my videos. All my product thumbnails in recent years is done on this corner right here. You'll see it so often. There used to be a white glorious PC mouse pad on this desk that really contrasted well with this gray desktop, but then I spilt some tea on it. <laughs> Now it's in the trash. You may have also noticed this glowy, nice, moving, glowing light in the back. This is a LifeX Z LED light strip. That's why in all of my A-roll shots, you'll see this nice glow emitting from my desk. I would make it match whatever I had as the wallpaper on my monitor to make it have this really cool vibe going on in the background. It also comes in handy when I'm filming B-roll shots, right? Because then I can change the mood to any kind of mood that I want it to be to fit the video better. However, there is issues with this. If you're recording video, there is some flicker in the LEDs when you do record and you'll notice this in my videos as well. So I'm trying to find a better alternative for these in the future when making videos. So if you do have an alternative to this, for video production, please let me know. That would be greatly appreciated. You can also see this mic on a nice little C-stand. Probably can't see the C-stand. This C-stand is normally holding up a hair light in the background of my videos. I usually just keep it just out of frame so that you don't see it shining down on me. But right now it's holding this mic, the Shure SM7B, which I bought back in December for voiceover work or when I'm talking to potential YouTube sponsors. It's also a really popular mic for radio hosts, podcasters, and uh, streamers. So I kind of wanted one myself. And now that I have it, I, I find any excuse to use it. Actually, I have a sponsor spot I need to record. How about we do it on this guy? Don't mind me, just, just recording an ad spot. This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Just like how you're on this channel curious about how my current YouTube studio looks like. Curiosity Stream fulfills your curiosity of knowledge through streaming interesting video content to your various devices. Curiosity Stream has thousands of streamable documentaries and nonfiction TV shows on topics like history, science, nature, tech, travel, and more. For example, maybe you're super curious about documentaries on sushi, or maybe World War II, black holes, or maybe you're in love with samurai swords. Whatever your tastes are, 
you do you. You can find super interesting topics like those and so much more. So check out Curiosity Stream at the link in the video description or in the pinned comment below and use offer code Jimmy for 25% off. It's thanks to sponsors like Curiosity Stream that allows creators like me to continue making video content. Anyway, back to the video. So my peripherals of choice is the Logitech MX keys for the keyboard and the Logitech MX Master 2S or MX Master 3, depending on how I'm feeling. So the reason why I use two different mice is actually no particular reason, <laughs> to be honest with you. I just like to switch it up every once in a while. And depending how I'm feeling, I'll just pull one mice out over the other. Beyond that, what this Shure SM7B is connected to is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. So that's my desk. Normally these drawers would be filled with a bunch of tech related junk, but I've been packing. So now it's starting to get kind of empty. Now that we're done with the desk, let's move on to other parts of my studio bedroom. So this is about the shot you normally see my videos, right? Well, let's flip that 180. This is what I like to call my YouTube set, but this is what most people would call a closet. It has all the characteristics of a closet as well, right? It has clothes inside, much less, because once again, I am moving. And the reason why I decided to record with my face facing the closet, this is because the clothes help prevent reverb so you won't hear too much echoing going on like you would in this situation. Watch, I'm just gonna clap and you're gonna hear some echo. I'm good. I, I don't like this. And behind me is just one soft box. And this is what's primarily lighting my face when I'm recording. If you're curious about what specific light I'm using, I'm using the Godox SL60W. It's a pretty decent cheap light. Beyond that is what's sitting right here. And this is, believe it or not, a teleprompter. Let me move it closer. How this works is I have an iPad that has my script written on it and this will be placed right here and then i can see all the text from your angle which is with the camera showing you don't get to see the text but i can see every bit of the text normally for teleprompters there's a person behind the teleprompter they see the screen and they follow along with the person and make sure that they're staying on track and ensure the text is moving at an adequate pace there's this really cool app that i use it's called Prompt smart, I think. For example, earlier I used this at the beginning of this video. Watch, if I say a few words, it'll move by itself. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that this room, this space, has been what I filmed most of my YouTube videos in for the last four and a half years. But beyond that, this is just my regular closet. When I'm done recording YouTube videos for the day, I take everything that's here and I shove it back in the closet. When I do need to use it, I pull it out of the closet. Is this a pain to do? Yes. Is it a pain to get dressed in the morning when I need to take something off of um, the rack and start wearing it if I'm going to work or going out? Yes. Do I put up with it? Yes. But that's the reason why we're moving. And lastly, there's one more spot left to talk about, which is where I put all of my filming gear. This is where I sit, right? That is actually right here. Inside of these are where I keep all of my uh, lenses for my camera and here is all the hard drives that I use for video editing or recording and a backup. These are LED tube lights. This is actually not a switch. This is an external recorder so that you can record directly into a hard drive instead of to the camera. This allows you to record in a bunch of different formats that you normally would not on your um, regular mirrorless camera. All right, so let me explain the reason for my move. Pretty much the situation is I'm moving into a house. I got married back in December of 2020 and well, my wife and I thought we would move into an apartment, but with the super low interest rates and being fortunate enough to have funds saved, we decided it was the best decision to buy a house instead of, well, moving into an apartment and doing a similar thing that what I have set up right now, which is record in a bedroom, except in an apartment building with potentially loud neighbors. So instead what's gonna happen is we're gonna move into a house and in that house, there's gonna be a room that I'm gonna dedicate to producing and making YouTube videos, a real studio. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. So we ended up purchasing a new construction home in Houston, Texas, you know, where I currently live right now. 
and my wife got the chance to, well, pick out all the interior finishes for the home. And I'm really looking forward to showing every single one of you all of that. I'm just gonna need a little bit of time before you see anything about it. Should I do a house tour? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Either way, I think it's gonna be really awesome and I'm super excited for it. I honestly have no idea how to end this video now. I got kind of distracted. So I guess I'll go with my usual outro. Anyway, what do you think? Is this the lamest YouTube studio space that you've seen? Or is it too practical? Should the next space be more studio-like or should it be more home-like? How studio-like? How home-like? Leave all that in the comment section below and, well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.